All right, boys and girls, we'll continue with our lesson. This is part three of unit four, week one. Now let's look at our targets. And it's really about dealing with all these inflectional endings. And remember, sometimes we have to double that consonant. And remember, consonants are all those letters except vowels, okay? All right, remember how you learned when you're first little, you learned all these letters? Those are the letters that are called consonants. There's no vowels in there, okay? And then vowels are A, E, I, O, U and occasionally why, okay? So those are the kind of things that really at fourth grade, there should be no question that you should know what those are. All right? All right. Whoops, let's go back. Okay, I'll take those off. All right. So what you're supposed to do, and some of you are independent, but remember, this is the same thing. We're looking for words in context. So remember what the words are across. I want you to see if you can read them, okay? This time I'm not going to read them. See if you can do it yourself. All right, hopefully you know those because we already said them in the previous lesson. And you should be, when I ask, especially if you're following the tutorial, you should be saying those words along with me. But this time I'm forcing you to practice those. So just like we've done in the past, we're going to write the spelling word that best completes each sentence. So really what we're looking for here is context clues. We do this a lot in reading. So when we come across some words that we're not sure of, we're going to look for context clues. Firefighters, oh, that looks pretty good are good at mm, people in danger. Oh, so firefighters in danger and people. I would think those are probably pretty good clues. What do firefighters do good? What do you think they do? Saving. Yeah, they save people in danger. How'd you do? Did you get that one? All right, so let's go ahead and cross that one out. I'm not totally scratched out, nice and neat. All right, let's try number nine. The clown onto his back when the pie hit him. So we've got a clown and on his back and then a pie hit him. So probably something I'm thinking like really makes me funny. The clown what? What do you think? Flipped onto his back when the pie hit him. All right. And then go ahead and make sure that you cross out the word that you already used. All right. So and then these are down here are actually just um, finding the definitions. These are kind of like context clues too. So if I look at number 16, talking about. Ooh, if you're talking about someone, you're what? Discussing. Okay? Alright, so I'll back and I'll read the rest and you need to then go and fill out the rest of your uh, words. Number two, after my shirt, I had to change clothes. After my shirt, I had to change clothes. Remember, pause when you need to. Three, my parents, the idea of a vacation. My parents, the idea of a vacation. Number four, we were down the police car to help us on the road. We were down the police car to help us on the road. Five, the excited puppy's tail, the ground. The excited puppy's tail, the ground. I thought the meatloaf, good. I thought the meatloaf, good. Now remember, if at any time you get stuck, what are you supposed to do as a strategy? That's right, just skip it, circle it, and move on, and go back to it later. Seven, is the spooky show you? Is the spooky show you? Eight, my sister all the way to school. My sister all the way to school. Number 10, the rude man was his way to the front of the line. The rude man was his way to the front of the line.
Do the best you can. Remember when you get stuck, skip it and move on. Running and jumping is number 11. What means the same thing as running and jumping? Or how can you put those words in a category that all seems like they fit together? 12, collected money. Now that doesn't mean skip all of them and have like eight of them blank. It means then go back, pause the recording, rewind it, just do the best you can. 13 is tumbling. 14 is got attention. 15 is tore. 17 is hitting lightly. 18 is frightened. 19 is using the tongue. And 20 is made to do something. Now, if you had to skip any of those because you got stuck, remember, you can always go back, okay? And remember, if you leave a couple blank, that's one thing if you're really stuck. But it really shouldn't be like, oh, I'll just wait for Miss N to give me all the answers because you're never going to learn anything, okay? And then you're just hurting yourself. All right, when you're ready, make sure you're done. And then make sure you have a pen handy for corrections. Otherwise, pause the recording right now and go fill in the rest of your, of your work. After my shirt, I had to change clothes. After ripping my shirt, I had to change clothes. Anytime, just pause the recording if you need me to make corrections. My parents discussed the idea of a vacation. We were flagging down the police car to help us on the road. Excited puppy's tail, the ground. Oh, I know something about an excited puppy tail, so I use my background knowledge. Well, I know it's going to hit the ground. Or tapped would mean would be like a synonym, wouldn't it? I thought the meatloaf, good. Well, if the meatloaf's good, I'm sure it's going to have to be not smelled good. Well, it could be smelled good. Heard good? No. Tasted good. It's all context clues. Is the spooky show you? Well, spooky, probably I'm trying to think about scaring, right? Yeah, good. My sister, all the way to school. Well, I'm thinking like jumped, skipped, hopped. Skipped. The rude man was his way to the front of the line. All budging, uh, skipping to the front of the line, walking to the front of the line. Forcing. Ooh, that's like budging. That's a good word for for uh, budging. You're forcing your way. All right, these might have been a little bit more difficult. If you're running and jumping, you are also skipping. If you're going to collect money, you're going to save it. You saved it, all right, because you collected it, which is past tense. That should be our context clue there. I just noticed that as Masen, too. The ED means that you already did it, and this already means I already did it. Look at this. Ing, ing. Yeah, that probably is some clue, huh? Tumbling is, oh, I'm thinking maybe flipping. Yes. Got attention. Ooh, what about that one? Oh, flag, like you flag somebody down in an emergency. If you tore it, oh, I'm thinking like another synonym is ripped. Yes. Hitting lightly. Well, that would be tapping. A tap is a light touch. I know that with my background knowledge. Frightened. I mean, you're scared probably, right? Because it ended in ED. Yes. Using the tongue. Are you talking? Oh, you're tasting. Made to do something. Oh, forced? Yes. How'd you do? Nice job. Hopefully you were really being honest with your work because in the end, when you don't score well on your I ready, we know it because you're not practicing these lessons with Miss N. All right, let's go on to the next activity here. And once again, we're gonna try to uh, hit our target today of really understanding when I have to double my consonants or drop an E, that that should really, at this point in fourth grade, should be coming automatic. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna read each verb. Then you're gonna write the correct ED and the ING form of each verb. So for instance, if I'm gonna go from scare to scared to scary, okay? Now that particular one, I do not double the consonants. 
So what you need to do with tap, discuss, taste, force, and skip is change those to ed words and to ing words. Be careful because sometimes you have to double the consonant and sometimes you um, have to drop the e. So be really careful to uh, remember what you need to do. So go ahead and pause those and then we'll continue. Fill in the right answers and then check your work. In pencil, please. Have Make sure your pen is ready. I hope you're pausing. Shouldn't be looking at and listening to Miss Sen right now. Should be doing your work. All right, you ready? All right, I hope you're being honest. Now, are you ready? So we go from tap to what? You should be saying this in your head with me. Tap to tapped. Even though it has an ed, it has the t sound, doesn't it? To tapping. And we're going to talk about why some of these words are the way they are. Discuss, disgust, discussing, taste, tasted, tasting, force, forced, forcing, skip, skipped, skipping. Now let's look at the words scared, scared. Do you hear the scare? It's got kind of a long vowel um, on that one. It, it sounds long, but um, it's not. It's scare. I'm just saying it sound. So look at how I don't. I just add the ed, and this one isn't a double consonant. Tapped. Ah, ah. Okay. So think about the sounds, like because this one is actually a short sound, but for scared, if it was scarred. Um, that would be a short vowel sound. Um, disgust already has two S's and taste it. That doesn't have a double concept because it's a long sound. Forced. Do you hear its sound or hear its name? So that's kind of how you can kind of tell too if they're short or long. All right, let's go ahead and read the next section here. We have read each word. Draw a slanted line to divide them into syllables. Write the vowel team on the line. So for instance, Coaster, coaster. Now, coaster, coaster. So I hear almost like I'm saying coast, coaster. Okay, right. So then, what I need to do is I need to find the vowel team. Boom, O A. Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna syllabatize all of those words and then write their correct vowel team. We have bookend, repeat. Southwest, needle, unload. So pause the recording and put, uh, syllabatize the words and then also put their vowel teams. All right, we'll check back in a second. All right, did you fill them out? All right, let's go ahead. Book end. Well, here's a trick about uh, compound words, okay? I should be able to separate both of those words. So when I syllabatize, I'm going to syllabatize each separate word, okay? So where is the vowel team there? Double O, okay? Now, for repeat, repeat, re, okay? Pete, what's the vowel team there? E A. How about southwest? Once again, it's a compound word. I should be able to syllabatize it between both words, south and west. What's the vowel team there? Good. O U. Awesome. How about needle? Needle. Need. I should really try to put the line, the slanted line, a little bit so you can see it. Needle. Okay, that's like consonant plus L-E, right? Yeah, so what's your vowel pair? There we go. And unload would be un and load. Yeah, you got the prefix there. And the vowel team there is O-A. All right, you ready? Your last part and you are done. Great job this unit. I know you'll do well on your test. Goodbye.